This is Pays. In a pod. Join us as we make missionaries. Who make missionaries. Hello everyone and welcome to the Pays podcast. This is Pays in a pod and we are super excited to um, have you listening today. We have a wonderful guest. It's our first guest on this podcast and he is very famous throughout the Pays community. I'm sure if you have heard of Pays, you will have heard of his name as well. Uh, he is the founder of um, Pays Movement and this is Paul Gibbs. You're so welcome to our Thank podcast. You. <laughs> we're very excited to have you how are you doing i'm good thank you how are you i'm doing really well doing really well the sun is out in the uk at the minute so we are excited that's typical because um it's miserable here in texas is uh, it yeah i'm gonna get on a plane and the minute i get on the plane the sun comes out here and i'm gonna guess it's probably gonna go in in england and start raining i would imagine so i'm sure i'm sure <laughs> It's amazing. So if you guys are listening on Spotify, um, we are also on YouTube. If you're listening on YouTube, we're also on Spotify and other platforms. So you can check us out wherever. Today, Paul is going to show us some things which are visual. Um, and so you might want to head on over to the YouTube to watch it. Um, but feel free to listen twice. <laughs> I think that would be good. Wonderful. Well, I would love for you to introduce yourself a little bit, Paul, for those who maybe don't know you or haven't heard of you in a while. Where have you been? What have you been up to? Um, what do you do? OK, so um, I was born in Manchester. Um, I moved with my wife and two sons to Texas, USA in 2005, I think it was. Um, so about 15 years ago, um, we um, started schools work in 1988 and created the pays movement in 1992 um and yeah so since then i've been doing that uh, i think that'll be in my life's work I, I imagine i'll do that till i die I die um so that's really what i've been doing and um i have lots of hobbies i like outdoor stuff so i like being in the surf i like hiking i like skiing I like mountain biking, which I took up recently. And yeah, that's me. Amazing. That's fantastic. I love surfing too. Mm. I, I was back in Northern Ireland last week and got to go in the sea and it's always amazing. Is it cold <laughs> last week? Fuck, it's always cold in Northern Ireland. <laughs> as long as you have a thick wetsuit, you're all good. Yeah. Where do you go surfing in Texas? I think, well, I don't in Texas. You can do it in Texas, but it's not very good. I tend to go Huntington Beach, which is uh, in California. So most years I'm in California at, at least once or twice. And I have a favorite spot, which is the north side of Huntington Beach Pier. It's always, there's always something, you know, there's always some kind of wave there. So it's kind of consistent. So it's good. Amazing. Brilliant. Well, you can always find the surf somewhere. <laughs> true it's true <laughs> fantastic well i would love to start off with a game okay um today so what we are going to do is because you now have lived in the states for so long maybe you have gone over to the other side i am here in britain dark side. um <laughs> the dark side depending on where you're sitting right now um <laughs> we'll find out so I would love to know, I'm going to give you a few things and sort of first instinct on what you say or what you now would, is your go-to, okay? So, football versus soccer. Football. Oh, still, still British there. Autumn or fall? Uh, I say autumn. Coriander. Oh, wait, let's try that one again. Coriander or cilantro? Um, I prefer cilantro. Mm. Are, they two, are they the same thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, I thought it's they were two just, different It's things. just a different name. Okay, so I don't think I was posh enough to eat uh, coriander when I was in England, but um, we have a lot of big Hispanic communities, so it's all about the Mexican food here. Cilantro is big here, so... There yeah. we go. Yeah, I think, I think it's a much more regular yeah. thing now, coriander in everything and Mexican food. I had Mexican food last night and the night before as well. So there you are. So porridge or oatmeal? 
Don't like either, but I would call it porridge. Bin or trash? Bin. You're still very British so far. Yeah. Petrol or gas? Um, I. So the thing is, I'll probably say gas when I'm here, but when I'm in England, I'll say petrol. It's just so people understand me. Makes sense, makes sense. And the last one, crisps or chips? Um, depends on where I am. I'll say crisps in England, but I'll say chips here, just because if you're ordering them or asking for them, they don't know what you mean when you say crisps. And you so, need to get your crisps. <laughs> and sometimes you have to put on an accent. So my wife, if you've heard Lynn speak, is very Mancunian, like more Mancunian than me. So she'll go and she'll go for a drive through and she'll just talk normally. But then she'll, so she'll say, I'll have a, a Big Mac and a coffee, please. So she has to put on the word because otherwise she, nobody knows what she's saying otherwise. So I have to do that in England with my Northern Irish accent. I feel yeah. the further south I go, the less they understand the Northern Irish accent. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. It's probably true. So hopefully it, you don't need to slow me down on the podcast. But um, if you do, you, you can take it down to 0.75 speed or something. <laughs> between the two of us Paul I'm sure they will understand what we're saying sure. amazing so that was just a quick quiz just to sort of see where you where you're at but I think adaptable is is the answer possibly yeah maybe so in the um the shape test which I know we're not talking about today my second shape is uh is a star which is all about adaptability so maybe you're right good spot yeah. Yeah, well, if anyone wants to check out the shapes test, this is a good promo plug right here. You go buy the book, check out www.pacemovement.com and go and see um, what books there are there. We've got lots and most of them written by you, Paul. Mm, yeah, yeah, most of them, I guess they are. Yeah, I think it's seven now, actually. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, and we're going to talk about the, uh, we're going to talk about the kingdom principles though today, correct? Yes. So we will be talking about Kingdom Principles. This is um, the series that we will be doing um, for the next couple episodes. So stay tuned for the rest of them. But Paul is going to kick us off today with the cloud and the line. So I would love um, for you to just sort of start to unpack that for us, Paul. What is the cloud and the line and sort of where did it come from? Right. So, well, I think the kingdom principles as individual principles came first, if I'm honest. I think I taught them first. And then um, I got inspired. I remember reading something that kind of inspired me to think of it as a visual. And so, oddly enough, the introduction came after I'd actually done all the individual different um, kingdom principles. So, um Yes, yeah, so that's what, what inspired me was the idea of how do I summarize the point of this to everybody? That was the main thing that helped me think it through. And then we came up with a diagram that I think has helped a lot of people over the years, um, all over the world, I think. Fantastic, fantastic. And, and again, like I said at the start, if you are on YouTube, you can see the diagram in a little bit when Paul pulls it up, um, just as he's about to start chatting about this. If, if you want to go and check that out, you can head on over to the YouTube. Um, but Paul yeah. will have that there. We have a wonderful um, way of doing that now with Zoom and all of these Zoom calls. Yeah. And do you want me to do that? Just, just explain this a little bit? Fantastic. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we can, uh, if people watch it on YouTube, they'll, they'll see it up here. So I think, look, a lot of Christians <clears throat> um, kind of live life on a line. So if, if you're not watching this visually, but you can imagine it, just imagine a line going across a screen. And on the left hand side, there's a, a big cross, you know, big X mark, you know, so when I was at school, I had a lot of these, you know, um, that's wrong. So on one side of our lives, there's the whole thing of, oh, I want to make sure I don't do anything wrong in order that, you know, I don't get punished because I don't want God to be angry with me. So I want to make sure I don't do anything wrong. And then on the other side um, of the line, we have a, a tick or a check, as they would say in, in America. Uh, this idea of, I want to see what I need to do that um, gets me brownie points with God. I want to know what I should do right in order that I get a reward. And so I think what happens is a lot of the time, the way we connect with God is this idea of what do I need to avoid doing that's wrong so I don't get into trouble and what instead should I do that's right 
so that I get rewarded. And I would use the phrase now, this is kingdom, uh, sorry, Christian centric. So our religion is based on, I'm going to follow God and do what's right or wrong, um, primarily driven by the idea of how that's going to affect my life. Does that make sense, Anna? So this mm -hmm. idea of, you know, I don't want to do anything wrong, so I don't get in trouble. I want to do things right so that I get a reward. Um, and it's interesting, there's, there's actually a word for that in Hebrew, it's halakha. So halakha are questions about laws. So it becomes like a law-based religion. It's all about the rules and all about the regulations because, again, we want things to go well for us. So in Hebrew thinking, you have questions about halakha. And then in the diagram, if you imagine above the line, you have a picture of a, just a simple picture of a cloud, um, which represents um, the presence of God. So in the Bible, when you see a cloud, quite often it represents the presence of God, or I like to say like the spirit or the heart behind the laws. Um, so um, when rabbis used to teach, they, they would teach halakha, which is questions about the law, or haggadah, Haggadah are the, the parables and the stories and the illustrations that explain the heart behind the law. So that's really important to me is I really don't want to be serving God based on just laws. I don't want to serve God based on if I do something right, I'm doing that so that I get a reward. Um, Kavna um, is another Hebrew word that I know there's three Hebrew words to think about now, but Kavna means that when we do something, we have an awareness of God's presence and God's purpose. So we basically, we do things for him as opposed to for us. So I do the right thing because, or I hope I would do the right thing because it will bless him, it will please him, it will give him what he wants. I don't do the right thing, so it gives me what I want. So um, we, we now have these phrases on page, or I have these phrases I teach um, which is um, kingdom-centric and Christian-centric. And I think there are two Gospels, essentially. I think there's a Christian-centric Gospel, which basically says, um, you know, follow God, um, do things God way, God's way, so that uh, he'll reward you. Whereas kingdom-centric is we follow God, we do things his way so that we can bless him so that we can give him what he wants as opposed to he gives us what we want. So primarily we do things with a cloud and line in mind. Are we line dwellers? Are we living on the line thinking, well, should I do this? Shouldn't I do this? How much of this should I give? Uh, what can I go and see? What's it okay for me to say? Uh, how much is it okay for me to drink? All based on the idea of, you know, how will it affect like, my relationship with God? as opposed to doing those things or making those decisions based on, is this going to advance God's kingdom? Is this going to give God what he wants? So I don't know if I've made that clear, but that's essentially the, the thinking behind the cloud on the line. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I think I'm sure if anyone has grown up in Christian society and they've been listening to this right now, they will be able to relate to that. I know for me growing up in Northern Ireland, if anyone knows anything about Northern Ireland, it is that we are deeply rooted in religion. Mm. Um, and so when I first heard this, I thought, oh, that's such, it just put words to something that I already felt, but was I was able to put the, the language to it. Yes. Um, and so growing up in a Christian centric world of, um, no, you need to do this. Um, otherwise, no, that's not what we're gonna... even even down to really silly things that I thought were almost like a sin. Um, <laughs> but but weren't even what one of them being, I used to think, because I don't know why, but this is something in um in Northern Irish Christian world that it's that it's not okay to find out the gender of your baby when you're pregnant. Oh. And so I, I genuinely, yeah, it's, it's, I, d I don't really know why. I'm not really sure why, but you get judged pretty harshly <laughs> wow. if you do that. It's sort of like, I remember, uh, people are quite old school. Yeah, when I, went, when I first went to church, uh, the one I remember was um, it was a sin for women to wear makeup. Mm. And I remember when I was 14, looking at some of the women in church, thinking it's probably a sin for them not to wear makeup, which I know it's wrong, but that's yeah. why I thought. 
And I remember, um, I remember a girl, young, a friend of mine coming in and she'd had a bit of lipstick on or something. I don't know what it was. And the pastor said, I see you've had your fingers in the devil's jam pot. That's what he said to her. <laughs> or jam jam. Oh, wow. I thought it was funny, yeah. but um, yeah. So yeah. And I think um, one of the things that happens nowadays is you know, we say ludicrous things. So we say things like um, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship, which is silly because it is obviously a religion. It just makes us sound stupid, I think, when we say things like that. So um, religion is how we connect with God. That's what the word means. It's the way you connect with God. So that's the reason we teach on this is, I think there are two gospels. You can connect with God. So your, your Christian religion can be based on this idea of, I want my life to work out well, so I'll follow God. Or it can be based on this idea of, I want the kingdom to be advanced. So I'm driven by that. And that affects the things that I do. And, um, and I think that moves us away from laws and thinking about laws and moves us more to the spirit behind the laws. What's the purpose? What's the, the purpose God has for this law? Why is it here? Um, I think um, the laws were set up um, to be our servants uh, not for us to be a slave to them. So they're there to help us propel us to advance the kingdom um, more effectively. Mm -hmm. and, and when you say laws, the first thing that comes to mind for me are the Ten Commandments in the Bible. Oh. Um, Jesus obviously gives gives a lot of context to that as well. But um, I think then it, it's really important then when we start to think about this of not, not just blindly doing something, um, for yeah. the sake of it or because we've been told it, but actually going right down to the root of it and the heart of the mm. matter and looking at the context um, of, of what was happening even when the Ten Commandments were given out. Yeah, and, and that's where the irony comes involved because, um, so the irony of, of all this is as we do things more for his purpose, then actually we do have a greater effect in a positive way in our own lives. So we don't do it for that. We do it for God's purpose, but Jesus, of course, said, if you seek first the kingdom of God, I give you all these things anyway. So that's the kind of um, the thing I think that's really been on my mind when trying to teach people. I really want people to be blessed. Um, I want people to pro prosper, but I don't think that should be the driving force at all. Um, mm. And so the reason I say that based on what you've just said is we took this word Kavanaugh. So Kavanaugh mm. is, um, so there's been a question in, um, the Jewish religion for a long time, which is, I'm going to use Hebrew words, forgive me for a minute, but I'll explain them. Uh, do mitzvot require kavanah or don't mitzvot require kavanah, which basically means does fulfilling a commandment or a rule require you to have kavanah, to do it for God's purpose or not? Um, and now I believe Jesus would give a big thumbs up to, yes, it does. So questions like, you know, um, like, so today I didn't murder anybody, uh, which is great. So I didn't murder yeah. anybody, um, you know, big clap on the back for me. Um, but of course, I didn't have, there was no intention in that. I just didn't murder anybody. Um, there might be things like more obvious uh, example, like when we break bread, you know, so if you break bread, you physically break bread, but your mind's wandering to, you know, when United are playing next, or, or your mind's actually doing it in remembrance of Jesus, does that make a difference? Clearly it does. It's, it's obvious. So just breaking bread, physically breaking bread, drinking some juice, thinking about United beating City um, is not fulfilling the commandments. So it's the intention behind the rule, the intention behind the act that's really key. And it's the intention, ironically, behind it that, that I think makes a much bigger difference to how God then deals with us. And I don't think we realise that. I don't think we understand just how important that stuff is to God, just how important our intention is to mm -hmm. how God then treats us and the consequences of our actions. Yeah, that's really good. And I I, I think sometimes you, you can see a pattern of um, people, even though the Bible says, don't look at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. Um, you can you can see that within within Christian society sometimes, and then that does give people this view of Christianity that is totally fake. Absolutely. And yeah. so we 
we, we don't we, we want to get to a place where we are, I suppose, using that buzzword of authenticity, mm. authentic in our relationship with Jesus, authentic in our religion with Jesus and yeah. being able to then take that into how do I advance the kingdom of God within that? Yeah, absolutely. I think it I think it transforms people's relationship with God if you come at it from a different angle. And I remember being even in a leaders meeting in a church, a large church in America many, many years ago. And just the way we were discussing things, just what we were going to do. At one point, I thought to myself, I think this is a different religion. And it took me a while to figure out. And I think it is a different religion. It's a different way of connecting with God. It's still Christianity. Um, I think both Christian centric and kingdom centric um, are Christianity. Both of them lead to eternal salvation, um, but it transforms our relationship with God and it transforms the results of what we do. We become far more effective if we're kingdom centric than if we're Christian centric, in my opinion, at least. And um, I, I, I could, I think, I could easily argue in Jesus' opinion as well yeah yeah no that's so good and and then just thinking about how the cloud and line then connects to um the kingdom principles and so we will be unpacking the kingdom principles over the next few podcasts right. but um i would just actually love to hear um you sort of talk about where where did you come up with the kingdom principles as a as a whole and think this is this is something that needs to be taught yeah no that's a great question because um the kingdom i think i taught the kingdom principles day one of pretty much day one of pays. So 1992. So I've been teaching them since 1992. So if I'm, I've got to be really honest and I'm not sure when I kind of collated them together. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's so long ago. I can't remember it so much. I think some things are so much part of you. You sometimes yeah. you can't remember where they came from. So I remember sitting down and thinking through them and, and beginning to add them together. And I think they're, you know, begin to, to work them all out and figure out how they fit. And um, like I say, later on, years later on, um, years later, the, the diagram to summarize them came into place. So that was kind of odd that that came second. So I guess it was all organic. I guess it happened over a period of time. I think I started thinking about the kingdom a little bit more in 87. I, I did like a, some missions training in 1987 and was just really introduced to just the concept of the kingdom. Because, of course, most Christians I met don't actually know what the kingdom of God is, which is really strange. I know you will. Um, um, but most Christians, if I go to most churches and say, you know, what is the kingdom of God? It's kind of a bit confusing to them. So they'll say, oh, well, isn't that the place you go to one day when you die? Or is that church? Or and they're not actually quite sure how to articulate it which is bizarre because it's the one thing that Jesus talks about more than anything else by a yeah. long, long way. And yet it's the one. Now, if I said to people, what is church? Everybody knows the answer to that. Mm -hmm. And sadly, if I said to people, what are the values of your particular church? A lot of people will say, well, our vision for our church is this, and here are three values and, you know, mm -hmm. belong, behave, believe, or whatever it might be. But if I say to them, okay, great. That's, you know, that's great. It's good knowing that. What is the kingdom of God? you get that kind of awkward silence. Can you give me the principles of the kingdom of God? You know, it's just, you just, they're just not there. People really struggle. And so something that's so crucial to God, unfortunately, isn't so crucial to us. So understanding what the kingdom of God is, yeah. um, which of course the kingdom of God is the, ro the rule or the reign or the royalty of God. So when God is in control, when God is Lord, the kingdom of God appears. That's why the kingdom of God is in us but the kingdom of God is yet to come mm -hmm. because God's rules in us and it's worked out, but then it, there's more of it to come. So I think in, in the late eighties, I began to understand that theology, that understanding of the kingdom. And that led me to think, well, well what are the values of the kingdom? What are the principles? How does this work? And, and yeah, mm -hmm. that's where we are today. Amazing. Amazing. I put you on the spot a bit there, <laughs> but no, no, um... no, I don't mind. It's good. It's a good question. Great. Um, yeah, so I, I I do just love that. And I think um, when we really do put our um, eyes towards and look towards the kingdom of God and what God and what God has said about um, the kingdom of God, then it does it does really help us to align our hearts with God heart, God's heart. Yes. yes. 
um which which is such a good way to and i think that's so challenging actually to think about especially for church leadership especially for church um churches running what what they're thinking about where they're like yes this is my vision for the church but but where where does the kingdom of god fit into that um because really we shouldn't be fitting the kingdom of god into that we should that's be right. putting ourselves into the kingdom yeah, of god, the kingdom of god a big rock, doesn't it so and it affects mm-hmm. so many other things we won't, we, won't, we won't have time to go into but it affects yeah. many other things I'm, I'm actually working on that next is is just the book it's kind of backwards almost again so the book that so all the books about our methodology all the books about pays kind of like theology i feel like there needs to be a book that kind of summarizes everything mm-hmm. and explains how it all fits in and um, so that's what i'm going to work on next um, and hopefully that will really help people think, almost give a foundation to everything else that comes out of that. Yeah, brilliant. That will be amazing. And I'm sure lots of people will be looking out for that book as well. And if you're interested, like I say, you can go to our website and check out all of the other books. Um, I'd love to know um, what you would say to someone if they're sort of starting to think about this cloud in the line, putting the kingdom first, where would you say to someone to start? Well, first you have to understand what the kingdom of God is. If you don't understand that, then the rest of it all disappears. So maybe just begin to understand what is the kingdom of God and, and recognizing it in your own life. So the kingdom of God is when God's in control, you could say, uh, when something's subject. So when somebody becomes a Christian, uh, they come, they, they, they're, they're born into the kingdom of God. You know, the kingdom lives within them. Um, suddenly Jesus is Lord of their lives. As they lead someone else to Jesus, the kingdom of God is advanced in that person's life. Um, so understanding that's key. I think um, for me, probably the next step is beginning to adopt a question I think is really helpful in all of this. It helps you, this question I'm about to share with you, helps you figure out direction, figure out where God will lead in you, figuring out what you should do. And it's simply the question, what will most advance the kingdom of God? So what will most advance the kingdom of God in my life and in the lives of those I touch? That's the next step, I think. Um, Because that that leads you to start studying and learning about the principles of the kingdom of God. So as opposed to, I know we're going back to the beginning of the conversation, as opposed to I've got these two options, which one will God want me to do? Because I don't want to get into trouble. Uh, which one will God bless the most? Forget all that. Ask the question, which of these two options will most advance the kingdom of God? And make your decision based on that. And God will take care of the rest of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously I'd, I'd recommend people do get the book, The Kingdom Principles, because it'll help them. But I think that question is the first, the first, you know, the first couple of steps. Know what the kingdom of God is. And secondly, begin to ask the question. When you face anything, ask the question what will most advance the kingdom of God? Yeah, amazing. That's so good. And I'm sure you find that once you started to to look into all of this, it it almost changed the direction that you were going in. Um, Yeah. Again, that's where Piers was born, um, all of that sort of stuff. But but yeah, how do you feel like um, the kingdom principles, uh, the cloud and line, how do you feel like that has directed your life? Um, I think if I was, so obviously I'm certainly not saying I'm completely kingdom centric. I'd like to be kingdom centric. I'm aiming to be kingdom centric as opposed to Christian centric. I think if I was Christian centric, there would be no pays um, because essentially, you know, I would, I would just do the things I like to do. I'd be more, I'd base things more around my ministry gift. So what are the things I like to do? And you even get really bad preaching, I think, on this, which is if you like to do it, it's probably that's what God wants you to do. But the minute you look at the Bible, you realize that Paul, Peter, Jesus, all these people called to do something special for God, did things that they were talented at, but they did a lot of stuff they didn't like to do as well mm-hmm. in order to advance the kingdom of God. Otherwise, we're just like the world. So I think my life would be much smaller. I think... Um, I'd probably be preaching because I like to preach. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'd be, you know, I think my ideal, and I have the options even now, you know, to, to live somewhere, you know, like California where I love and, and just to write books and go and teach. 
without all the hassle of leading pays and all the issues that you get uh, managing people, just become some, some kind of itinerant guy. I think the minute I did that, I'd become far less effective immediately. So I'd, if I concentrate just on the things I like to do, um, I don't think, because I think there needs to be tension in our lives between the things that we absolutely love to do, um, but the things that we also do to, if that's the kingdom of God that we don't like so much. And I think that tension makes us really effective. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Oh, brilliant. Oh, well, thank you so much for just introducing that to us today and, and sort of um, starting to unpack it a little bit. Like we've said, really easy to get more information um, about all of this and especially by continuing to listen to our podcast so you can subscribe you can um do whatever you need to to remind yourself that we're here um <laughs> and it's been so good but I would love to ask you just finally Paul um about the three hike that's coming up because this will come out before the three hikes up so I would love for people to be able to get the opportunity to get involved um in the three hikes so could you just um yeah explain what that is to us yeah, so uh, you, you're asking great questions, Anna. Um, so many, 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 many years ago when Pays was still in its infancy, we had two or three teams, uh, full-time workers. Um, somebody came to our church and kind of prophesied for those who believe in that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it was kind of a, a bit of a cliche almost, but God will give you everywhere you step. So I'm quite practical. I'm thinking, okay, well, if this is true, I'm going to put it to the test. I'm going to walk across England and ask God to give me or to give himself or however you phrase it, to open up the schools of England. So I'll walk across England and pray for the schools of England to open up. And that's what I did. So just over 25 years ago, I did um, a, an unofficial route that's called the Coast to Coast. And I did it in 13 days. I walked from um, basically Cumbria um, and all the way over to uh, Yorkshire. And I walked from coast to coast. And... Um, and obviously what happened then was schools did open up. I'm not saying just because of my prayers, but schools did open up, pays expanded, and 25 plus years later, we're in 20 nations around the world. And we've got lots and lots of full-time apprentices and staff. And and we're, you know, I think we're making a difference and beginning to have an impact. So I felt just recently on the heart to do it all over again. Um, I think there's more need now than ever. And I think the church is missing a massive opportunity because we're about building our churches and not understanding it's about advancing the kingdom. And probably the best place you can advance the kingdom in the world is in schools because mm -hmm. someone else has bought the building, someone else has paid the utility bill, someone else is paying the staff. And if done appropriately and correctly and legally, you can go into most schools in the world and get an opportunity at some point to share your faith. So it's a massive opportunity that's completely, not completely, but almost completely being missed by the church. Yeah. So I'm going to do it again. This time I'm going to pray for the schools of the world. What I'm really praying is not so much the schools open up because they are. I'm praying that churches will open up mm -hmm. and churches will understand and awareness will be made that there's this massive opportunity to reach generation that's being missed right now. So, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And when is that happening? So I actually, um, this weekend, I'll leave for England because I've got a quarantine for 10 days, by the looks of it. Um, and then the first day of the walk is on May the 17th. So I'll be speaking at Life Church in Burnley on the 16th, which is the headquarters of Pays uh, in Great Britain. Um, and then I will, hopefully, the church will pray for me. And then I will leave the next day on the 17th. And, um, well, I was going to say, tw it'll take me 12 days, hopefully. I'm going to do it a day shorter than last time but there's a day in between when I'm speaking at a church in Bolton and a, sorry, a church in Richmond, which is on the route. Um, so that's influence church. And then when I finish, I'll be speaking at King's church in Bolton. So three great churches. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So if you're a bite, you can, in England, you can, um, hopefully come down, book into those churches, <laughs> come and see, um, Paul or, or join him on the walk. That's an option too, isn't it? Yeah, I think some people are going to join me for like, uh, you know, half a day or a day uh, at certain points. So, um, yeah, they can contact me and see if there's a place available, definitely. Yeah, but there is more information on the website. Um, you can keep up with us on our social media, all of that sort of stuff um, to hear about what's going on. But please, please, please do join us in praying um, yeah. for schools, for opportunities, for churches um, to take those opportunities um, within schools as, as we're doing this. This is something that we can collectively 
come together and pray for. Um, and just the last thing, and if you don't mind me just saying, is if people want to follow me as I'm doing it, I'll be vlogging each day. So if they join me on Facebook or they join Pays on Instagram, um, they can virtually walk across England with me um, and just see the sights and hear the prayers and stuff. So Fantastic. And is that your Facebook? Yes. Yeah, so I think it might be on the Pays one as well. It could probably be put on Pays one as well. Pays one as well. Fantastic. So you can follow along. You can see um, everything that is going on. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Paul. And thank you to everyone who's been listening. We hope you've enjoyed and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us today. Find out more about Pays at paysmovement.com.